Hello everybody and welcome aboard Jira. My name is Peter and we have a beautiful but windy day here in Grenada. Today is 7th of January and we just arrived to St. George and I would like to give you a small tour of Jira because Jira will be for sale in March or April and she has been our home for more than three years now and we crossed the Atlantic with her was the second time she crossed it. You might know Jira from the boat Girasol, the, the sailing channel Girasol. And Lucas and Andrea, they did a great job documenting their journey and addressing all the issues they had and fixing her up to, be going, to become a true blue water sailboat. And yeah, we were very happy with her, but unfortunately we need to go back to work. So this is why we are we decided to to sell her so as you can see this is the cockpit it's a Bavaria 44 from 2003 and there is plenty of space to lie down relax and also it's quite easy to walk through so it's a two wheel configuration with a sugar spoon at the stern and some things we added that you don't know from Girasol sailing is for example let me swivel this around we have like the salt water and the sweet water showers right at the stern so to conserve fresh water we even have the salt water outlet in the galley and also here at the stern of the boat what comes with the boat is the original high field dinghy which is from 2019 including the 15 horsepower four stroke outboard from honda I'll give you a closer shot it's in decent condition some one chamber has a patch the others are okay um, currently the uv cover is on um, so it's for sure good for another couple of seasons then back to the cockpit one addition we did is the plotter that can swivel so as you can see it's mounted on a Podest and it's very easy to open it and turn it around so even when you are sitting in the cockpit and having watch it's very easy to just keep an eye on everything including of course um, radar it's currently in standby so nowhere there the radar overlay is coming so including radar AIS and so on then autopilot controls are also mounted here and below is switches for the deck lights and the stern light, the horn, um, some red ambient light here below the table or white, both colors. And there's a cradle for the VHF remote control which is charging here. Normally when we do short distance we just use the handheld VHF, it's sufficient from range. Um, but, for, but there is a cradle here for the for the VHF as well. So another thing is the bow thruster. It's a 4.4 kilowatt um, Vitus bow thruster and it's controlled here from the helm. Then engine controls are right over here. As of today, 17th of January, we have 6076 hours on the clock which is not little for this age. Jira has been in charter before so I guess there are a lot of hours accumulated but the engine is perfectly maintained so it's always directly starting no smoke and also plenty of um, maintenance above the normal maintenance was done for example um, the diaphragm of the sail drive was changed in 2020 and new injectors, new seals, um, the, the main seals are all new, 
and of course very regular oil changes and so on have been done. I will show you the engine later. Um, it's always starting, very reliable, no problem. So the Bimini cover is from 2019 and of course there's also a spray hood in the same color that folds up. Currently it's down because for better visibility and here you can already see two of the solar panels. These are tiltable on racks, very easy to fold up in the morning or evening to catch most of the sun. And on the stern we have the wind generator running, the silent wind pro 400. And behind that is uh, four panels, each 140 watt peak. And three panels one more row we added it was not originally on the boat um, this is two times 120 and one time 100 uh, so in total we have 1.1 kilo watt peak of solar plus the 400 from the wind generator and that's really a lot and we have lithium on board we cook fully electric and there's plenty of energy to be self-sufficient and even produce water with the water maker so uh, energy is not a problem at all uh, if you're two persons if you're six energy is getting a bit tight with cooking then sometimes um, we we use a portable gas stove um, to just conserve a bit of power so the side decks uh, looking different than the usual Bavarias. There's normally an aluminium tow rail here and this Lucas and Andrea they they grinded this all off and the hull deck joint is not glued anymore it is completely laminated over. The surface finish is maybe not perfect but uh, it's, it's uh, completely waterproof. There's no more leaks from any of the stanchions and um, even they have been upgraded so much more solid including now solid railing stainless steel cleats right to the strongest point of the boat now so it's a very very solid bavaria the most solid we think you can find because also the whole keel section was enforced reinforced by lucas and andrea moving forward um, the rig was just inspected two days ago we had one wire of a lower shroud that was broken and we replaced all four lower shrouds um, two days ago and it was fully inspected and redone so uh, the report is available with the boat comes the whisker pole for the jib the jib is from 2019 110 percent the mainsail is from 2016 um, both furl furling sails on the bow you have uh, we have the jumbo anchor 30 kilogram with 10 millimeter of chain never let us down 50 knots anchoring no problem even in, in with with bad uh, bad gravel it was no problem at all some people dragged we never dragged the anchor settles sets right right where you drop it maximum a meter then it's in really happy with it the chain is in two parts. The 80 meter chain, 80 meter length of chain is one time 50 meter and then shackled together with which are shackles that are even stronger than the actual chain is another 30 meters. So the 80 meters is split into two. But um, normally we, we are fine with the 50. So this is the whisker pole. No, this is the pole for the Genaka. Could even be used for Spinnaker, but we carry a Genaka. The Genaka is in here and it's from 2019. It was patched one time, but it's still really good. And we sail in apparent winds of five to 12 knots with it. It's with a sock, so it's also easy to handle. Um, I'll show you the chain locker. It's a Tigris windless 1500 watt very strong also very reliable all right then take you back the other side
Life Raft is from 2019. It's due for service um, to keep the warranty. And what we added is the release in case of um, if we if, if Jira would sink very very quickly, then there's a self release on the life raft. But you can also just manually release it. All right. We added another display right here, visible for everyone, and of course. It's multifunctional, so it shows all the information that is available on the network, even as targets, including position and so on. This is labeled. Let me also show you the storage. Here we have two lockers, one each side, very deep, very big lockers. On this side there is uh, four yellow canisters of 20 liter diesel each, one red canister of gas for the outboard plus the tank for the for directly connecting to the outboard. So in total we can carry 30 liters of gas and additional to the 220 liters in the tank it's 80 liters of diesel in the canisters okay okay then let me take you to the inside so this is the inside Chart table and salon table. The salon table lowers, makes a double berth. The upholstery was redone in 2021, including new foam, very stiff, high density foam. Um, and this side is also the side where pots and pans are stored. What we changed here, originally there is these springs in that fold in when you touch them. And we, it was quite dangerous because if you hit it with a pot then the whole thing collapses on you and this is now, even when healed over, very very stable and easy to close. This side the galley with an 80 liter domatic fridge and a custom made gimbal cooktop. This is a radiant cooktop but we have a portable induction as well so three cooking zones. The small one we only use when we add anchor. Yogurt maker is running every day um, plus rice maker and so on. This is a microwave plus real recirculation oven and also it's possible to steam stuff inside and we did some major upgrades to the to the drawers as well so originally the there's only two drawers the top drawer is not in this is because there is the sink in the way and we just cut the front panel and added the top drawer for cutlery and the original drawers was were opening maybe something like that and now we added like full extension linear bearings and it's really opening all the way now, plenty of space. And we love it. All right. We have two bilge pumps. Bilge is dry. Um, two electric ones, one manual one from the cockpit and one manual one, a whale gusher, which is mounted in one of the guest cabins. And um, 
this is then really moving a lot of water if you in case you need it we also added a custom AC panel so there is two inverters the original one which is also connected to shore power inverter one is uh, the master vault 2200 which is switched on on this side so as soon as the inverter is on the light comes on and then we have different circuits for oven cooktop kettle which is the kitchen outlet sockets this is for example this outlet but also the one in the bathroom for the razor and we have a hot water boiler so even on battery it's possible to make hot water it's definitely not needed in this climate and uh, what you can do is you can just decide if you want to use the 2200 watt inverter or the 3000 watt inverter um, just by switching in the middle it's off on the top you use the second inverter and the second inverter starts here so now the second one is on and also the second light is on and of course all of them have fault current detection so um, yeah this all and there is one additional charger for lithium because the original mass combi inverter is now set to a constant voltage and it can charge up to 90 percent the lithium which is actually very healthy but if you really want to top up to 100 there is a second charger from victron um, which is which is controllable with the switch the whole wiring of the dc has also been redone every cable labeled there's um, it's all cleaned up and documented and um, yeah pretty much self self-explaining navtex is on board a wi-fi router also that has a sim card or you can get it put a sim card inside and have internet for everyone on board um, another thing we added switch the inverter off it's an alarm panel this is also custom made and there are three water sensors now in the bow uh, in the let me switch off the fan in the bow in the in the main bilge and at the stern where the motor sits and um, this is the three water alarms but also we have like exhaust temperature monitoring which reacts much quicker in case there's something wrong with the cooling um, than, than the normal motor alarm and it's um, yeah quite noisy and you can just mute it and then you find the problem and then after finding you can reset it all right there is a second soil 3 plotter mounted below uh, charts charts are basically for the whole barefoot route available um, a lot of hella fans there is three here in the salon there's two in the front cabin and yeah, ventilation with mosquito nets inside on the hatches so let me take you to the area where we live so this is the Weber's cabin with storage on top with a huge port light and normally we have the dinghy on deck and we lift it up a bit then even more air is, is funneled in and this is the one bathroom there's the outlets for the water maker salt water outlet and toilets were all new two years ago it's the manual toilet still because for maintenance reasons it's just perfect and it's a comfort size so it's the, the bigger one and what we have here is two water makers they're mounted in a way that they can be very easily taken out because the screws are in the panel behind and it's just four loosening four nuts and then it's easy to remove remove the hoses and can take out water maker one is the one on top and it's uh, running every second day and producing all the water we consume uh, water maker two is broken 
um, there is uh, the casting is broken and also the high pressure chamber is cracked so it's beyond repair it's just for spare parts now um, we didn't replace it because one water maker makes sufficient water for us uh, but it would be very easy to to replace water makers are switched on here uh, water maker and also the priming so there is a prime pump which pumps water up uh, and then there is two test water tubes down here and we just with a TDS meter we just uh, test the water before we pump into the tank and this is this panel here so from here we can decide if the water maker is producing into test or into tank and uh, for each water maker so after testing we switch the water maker to tank then we are producing directly in the front tank all right then we have another cabin right on the other side which is the storage area um, we put these shelves were old bunks and we put these blue boxes and labeled them inside and here we have tools and spare parts there is plenty of engine spare parts on the boat um, that come of course with the boat everything Bosch tools here jigsaw grinder everything comes with the boat and a washing machine as well it uses quite a lot of water it's a cold water washing machine but you can also put in hot water manually um, we only use it at in a marina because it's using really quite quite a lot of water Right. So then one more bathroom with yeah. here is the holding tank um, and the switch for switching fresh water between the tanks. And as mentioned there's in this in the socket for a razor and here you can see sea cocks have been changed I think 2018 or 19 um, and always two hose clamps on yeah, toilet brush and so on is here and then there's two guest cabins which we currently also use for storage there's still some food lying around. We have two of these comfort seats, which are perfect for launching on the deck. Yeah, and below this is the water tank below the, the bed. And another cabin is here. Here's a diesel tank below. And it's very comfortable for two persons. Three port lights here. Also the top one with a mosquito net. And then most of the lockers they have shelves so they are not hanging lockers anymore Andrea and Lucas put shelves in which we are very happy for also storage below here and so on all right then I still would like to show you the the battery the lithium bank which is right below here so I Open this, there is starter battery, normal LED or AGM, I think it's an AGM battery uh, with a separate charger, isolated charger set with the right charging profile so the starter battery is always topped up even if the boat is on the heart for a long time no problem it will always directly start and then here we have four marine grade lithium batteries from CS batteries each one is 120 amp hours so it's 480 amp hours here and we have another 180 amp hours also below the V-burst so plenty of lithium storage and um, yeah this is sufficient for also electric cooking everything all cables from the battery have the same length there are two shunts 500 amps each 
for each inverter basically plus this one also has the house bank uh, the, the DC supply on it and they're in parallel they only show one value on the network and this is the first inverter 2200 watt this is the second inverter and also what we added is in case there is a battery failure um, of course we can separate the bow this is the black switch um, also the bow thruster is connected to this so then the bow is not connected to here anymore and we can switch the house bank between battery 1 and 2 battery 1 is the lithium batteries and battery 2 is the starter battery and the motor can also be switched between battery 1 and 2 this is because in case the lead battery fails and you want to start the motor you just turn the switch to the lithium and you can start the motor or in case the lithiums fail because they are deep discharged uh, or there's a lightning strike and the internal electronics fail or whatever then even the navigation electronics or the VHF can be switched um, to the starter battery and the starter battery is of course charged by the alternators as well so the alternators start charge both batteries and um, in this way even if the lithium fails you still are able to use navigation electronics or the VHF like like normal because most likely the starter battery will survive um, and the deep discharge of the lithium is then not such a such a danger anymore all right um, that's the battery bank three solar charge controllers are here in the back all MPPT and now I still show you the engine this is the engine room there is the original alternator on the right side on the left side is the same alternator we wanted to carry the same spay part but a custom made bracket very beefy could even carry a high power alternator but we wanted the same to use the same part here and they are running in parallel both are 16 amps alternators but realistically at cruising rpms they produce like 20 to 30 amps each and they charge directly into the starter battery and the lithium battery so mainly because the starter battery is always full they charge the lithium bank and um, no problem because they have an internal charge controller which limits the, the temperature of the alternator to 85 degrees C and I measured regularly that it's working perfectly so the alternator for sure don't take damage even though they are directly connected to lithium here you can see the charge splitters in the back so one for each alternator and then right here you can see the Raker diesel filter with a 10 micron filter as, a pr as another pre-filter and from there it's then directly to the shutoff valve and then to the tank so this is the port side this is the original alternator location this is a new stainless steel exhaust elbow then charge splitters again the siphon valve and this strips a bit this is why there is a small hose coming here into a small basket and if it's an idle it's stripping a bit if it's cruising rpm it's completely completely dry um, but there's a bit of water and it's salt water so it's just collected here in the small basket and every now and then I empty it sail drive is below is down below here there's one cooling inlet salt water inlet at the sail drive one seacock and there's another one right in front of the engine so two salt water inlets for getting sufficient salt water in and now show you the other side so this is the other side of the engine a 
alternator, injectors. Fuel pump has been changed, the manual fuel pump. The old one didn't have enough lift. And we have some paper towel below the engine just to be just to realize in case something's leaking. And yeah. Air filter is new. And there's a dipstick for the sail drive. We also put in spare throttle cables. We don't know how old these throttle cables are. The shifting is very smooth, no problem. But we bought the spare parts and we put them in. Not really in, but next to the old ones, just in case we need them, they're already in the right location. So for the gear and also for the throttle, there's already spare shift cables in, um, yeah, in case they're needed one day. So this I still, this I still wanted to show you. Get a flashlight. This is the salt water pump. Um, and this is the second seacock down there and as you can see the bilge is completely dry in the engine room there's the sensor for water detection right here but it's not dropping salt water or anything so that concludes the tour so if you're interested in her if you have any questions um, please contact us we will be in the Caribbean until April and in April either we sail back or let someone sail her back or until April she should be sold feel free to drop us a message and come by happy to sail with you